Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Elias. I'm on my way to the Florida International Rally and Motorsports course. And uh, I was reading the comments uh, this morning. I was drinking, I was making my coffee. And uh, I read the comments that you guys have left in my Civic Type R videos. And everyone's kind of wondering what I paid for this car. Uh, so instead of me just telling you what I paid and my insurance, it's kind of a boring video. I'm going to try to help you guys find the car that you want, whether it be a GR Corolla or a Civic Type R or a Supra or whatever it is that you're looking for. And I'm going to set you guys a strategy on how to go after that car and not overpay for it. Now, I'm not going to say that everyone's going to be able to get their cars at MSRP, but you should be aiming for that. So uh, let's go over that in this video. We're going to be going into detail. It's going to get a little bit nerdy. Uh, if you haven't yet, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you have a comment, if you you know, let me know in the comments if you're looking for a new car and if you've had a hard time with dealerships in the last two or three years. Let me know in the comments what your dealership stories are. I'd like to see them and hear them because I've heard a lot of nightmares, but there's also some good dealerships out there. So if you have a really good dealership you've dealt with, please let me know in the comments. I'd like to know where they are. My favorite dealership is Honda of Hackettstown. They're up in New Jersey. They really don't get much uh, in the way of Type R's, but they took care of me when I had my transmission issues in my FK8. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, let me uh, finish this coffee real quick and get started on how to get your car as close to as, as MSRP as possible. Right, so I'm gonna cut right to the chase. What did I pay for this car? So when I went to look for this car, I had my strategy was I was gonna pay MSRP only. I only wanted red or championship white, and I'd be willing to pay a little bit extra for the red one. I don't know if you guys know, but only about 200 red Civic Type R's were made in 2023. It's a very rare color. And my theory on that is that Honda doesn't actually charge extra for the red it charges extra for the championship whites and uh, the other colors that's been, that's been selling a lot of boost blue for example they charge a little bit extra to the dealers uh, when they deliver it so it's a more premium paint and therefore hey it's the first year of a civic type r honda wants to get as much cash as possible so it's not going to make as many reds uh, as people would want and so I wanted a red one really badly. I, I had a championship white one, and there's a significance of championship whites. It has to do with Honda's F1 efforts. But I wanted to get it at MSRP, and I ended up buying it for about two grand, about 2,300 bucks uh, more than MSRP. So my strategy was I'll pay 50 grand out the door for a red one, or 47,000 out the door for a white one and or 47.5 out the door and the reason i did that is because and when you ha when you hassle or haggle out the door price you have to keep in mind there's dealer fees almost every dealer has dealer fees there's absolutely going to be taxes you have to pay the tax man depending on what state you're from in new york that's eight and a half percent in florida that's six percent and so that's something all of that you need to keep in mind as you go shopping for your car and set up your strategy So as a refresher, I bought my Colorado ZR2 for like five or six grand under MSRP. That was back in Pennsylvania. I bought my C8 Z51 Corvette back when it was, you know, very popular in 2020 for MSRP. I bought my FK8 Civic Type R back in 2017 for MSRP. So I have a bunch of history of me going after the price that I want. And, you know, for example, the Corvettes, I was able to get my Corvette because of a relationship that I had with a Chevy dealer. I still have, I'm friends with, you know, Mooseball is his name on Instagram. And uh, he's a great guy. He's a great salesman and he sells Corvettes in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, where, which, which is where I used to live. And so, when you just set up your pricing strategy, you have to set it up in, in, in the, the framework of the, the realities of the time. If it was 2019, I wouldn't tell you to pay 
MSRP for, for any, any pickup truck or, or anything that you could buy from Chevy, etc. It just wasn't the case. After 2020, things have obviously changed. Concentrating on the Civic Type R, I went after this car with the mindset of MSRP plus taxes and fees for a white one or a little bit extra for the red one. And so the next step is figuring out how you're gonna pay for it. Now, I always recommend that if you're gonna buy a car, you should be able to pay for it cash, right? If, if you can't just go up and straight up and pay for a car, a sports car uh, in cash, you're not really making a very sound financial decision. Now, obviously, if you if you're if you're buying a, a, a regular Civic hatchback or you know a a work truck type of work truck or you know something that you're going to be using to just commute to the work, etc., there's financial you know other financial implications related to that, right? If you only get if you only have one car and you need that car to get to work, it's got to be a good one. And so, obviously, you know I, I I I can see you financing that if you need to, but I wouldn't buy a sports car as your only car, um, unless kind of, I mean, the Civic Type R does, can do a really good job of being a daily. Outside of that, make sure you can pay for it for cash, but if you can get good deals on financing, be sure to get those prior to going to any dealership. So I am part of, I, I, I've joined like three or four credit unions, and credit unions have the best rates that I've seen for mortgages and for cars. And so uh, through my credit union, I'm able to get uh, seven years for about four and a half to 5%, um, depending on what day it is. And you know, it changes, the rates changes up and down. And I have not been able to see a better rates than that anywhere else. In fact, my Camaro, I could have paid cash for my Camaro, but my Camaro is financed at 2.79, uh, M not MSRP, uh, interest rate, 2.79 APR, which is insane. Right, and I only was able to do that because I paid attention to my financing before I even started shopping. So, so keep that in mind. Get financing ahead of time. Get pre-approved ahead of time before you're willing to, you know, go after that car. Once you have financing secured, once you're ready to go, once you can pay cash for that car if you need to, the next step is look at inventory. There's a number of websites online. I've used Auto Trader. There's another website that was built by an enthusiast that tracks Gia Corollas, uh, Acura, Integra Type S's, and Civic Type R's. That's been very useful. It tells you where vehicles are being shipped to. Uh, Auto Trader does this as well. And I know the, that Honda itself has an inventory list. So I look at all three to see the inventory that's coming in. And I look for championship white cars and red cars that may be on the showroom floor or is gonna be delivered to that showroom very soon. So once you can see the, the inventory, and I just use, you know, I use uh, the Brave browser, but Firefox, Google Chrome, Internet Explorer, they all have this. I would open up as many tabs as I need to with every single vehicle that's in inventory. So once I have my list, and I make sure that that list includes every single phone number that I need to call, I sit down with some, a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or some water, hanging out, and I start making phone calls. A lot of people say that, you know, email all these people. I don't think emails work that well. I think a, a phone to phone call is the best way to do it. Face to face is the best way to do it if you can, but I'm assuming you've exhausted your local options already. Because, I mean, one of the first things you do is you go to your local dealers and say, hey, can I get a Civic Type R? And they're going to laugh in your face and say, yeah, if you give me 20 grand over MSRP. That's what happened to me, just by the way. <laughs> so you're going to make phone calls and you're going to factor in, okay, so how far away is it? The farther away it is, the more expensive it's going to be to get it back home, either by shipping or if you're going to, not only if you're going to ship it, if you're going to drive it back, it's going to cost you money as well. You're going to put miles on your car. These are things that you need to consider, right? And it should be considered holistically. So if it's if you live in New York and the car is in California, I doubt you're gonna find any California cars for a good price. But let's say you do that, uh, you gotta factor in that whole travel time. Now, if you're in California and you find a car in Arizona, that's not gonna be too bad. So keep that in mind. After you set up your inventory list, start making those calls and just say, hey, I'm looking for a Civic Type R. I see you have one or two that's coming in that's in the color that I want. Here's my offer. 
right? And for the most part, you're gonna get laughed at, you're gonna say, we can't do that, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, that's not a problem. Make that phone call, give them the offer, and let it sit. And it's gonna take about 50, 60 phone calls for you to finally start landing some deals. So specifically what happened to me was I made phone calls to all the dealerships up and down the eastern seaboard, as well as Texas and a few other states, just to see, hey, you know, here's my offer. I'll give you 50 grand out the door for a red one. I'll give you 47.5 out the door for a white one. That's it. And everyone, every single one of them was like, well, we'll see what we can do. I'm not sure we can do that. I think we can do this. I think we can do that. I'm not sure if we can do this. I didn't even listen. I didn't care. Here's my offer. Take my name down. Thanks for calling me. And then every two days, I would call them back if they haven't called me back already. I would call them back and ask, hey, do you guys still have that car in stock? Have you considered my offer? You have to be persistent. That's part of the strategy. Once you get somebody to agree on the price that you want, that's what happened with me, right? To specifically on this car, I called Atlantic Honda and I think they wanted 20 grand over for a while. And this thing was sitting on their showroom floor for quite a while, actually. It was sitting on their showroom floor for like a month or two and they wanted like 20 grand over. See, I didn't care. I just called them, gave me my offer, left it at that. I called them back a couple of days later. Hey, here's my offer again. It's the same guy. You know, I'm, I, I, was, I was working with so-and-so, right? Try to work with the same car salesperson so that they know, you know who, who they're talking to. And I would call and they, they said, no, nope, we can only do seven grand over. I'm like, so they went from 20 to seven in just that phone call. Well, I just let it go again for two more days. And they called me back and said, hey, let's go ahead and give you the price that you want. The price that I asked for. I wanted 50 grand out the door. They got me 50 grand out the door, right? And it's persistence and it's writing it down and it's calling them back. It's, it's not gonna be easy. It's gonna feel like a job. It's gonna feel like you're doing a job. <laughs> so if you wanna save the money that you wanna save, it's gonna cost you some time. So finally, after we agreed upon the price, you gotta make sure you get it in writing. So I said, okay, that's the price. Send me a document. Give me a document that says exactly what I'm going to pay for it out the door. Once I get that document, I'll send you my deposits. And you have to be ready to give a deposit. So once I got my, depo once I got my document sent to my email address and texted to me just in case, I said, all right, that's the price I'll pay. That's great, thank you. Here's my deposit. And I asked them, how can you take it? And I, I like to give my credit card just so I can get points, right? It's gonna cash credit card. And it, it costs them a little bit of money, but I got them to take my credit card for about 2,500 bucks and that was it. It's not easy these days anymore. Since, since ever since 2020, since the pandemic hit, inventory everywhere has suffered significantly. Uh, it doesn't feel like we're really back to normal anywhere still. We're doing this weird EV push, so manufacturers are busy trying to build EVs that nobody wants to buy. And it's, it's been difficult for everyone to get the, the cars that they want. They only sold like 2,500 Civic Type R's last year. That's in, in the United States. That's kind of crazy to me, but it is what it is. And uh, again, I hope you guys uh, found this helpful. If you did, hit that like button. Make sure to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.